Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And a happy Thanksgiving to you all the day after. We want to hear from you. Send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. And today we have our beloved friends, John and Deborah Giles, with us. They have a farm. It's called Agnus Day Farm. You can go to their website, agnusdayfarm.com. And we really, and today we're going to be talking about really um, having an attitude of thankfulness. An and attitude of gratitude. I an, just thought of that. Yeah. And so, um, and not just doing that during the holiday season, but really making that happen. How do you do that like 365 days out of the year? It's the Giles be, have some ideas about that. Yeah, too. so beautiful. I wanted and to read, oh, I'm sorry, did I cut you off? I mm -hmm. wanted to read a, a quote that the Giles gave to us some time back. It's not their quote, but a quote by somebody else. And it says, I would rather have a plain coffin without a flower a funeral without a eulogy, than a life without the sweetness of love and sympathy. Let us learn to anoint our friends beforehand, before their burial. Post-mortem kindness does not cheer the burdened spirit. Flowers on a coffin cast no fragrance backward over the weary way. And again, that, that's saying, hopefully we seize the time, Thanksgiving Day, say, I love you. I, I, I bless your life. I'm at peace with you. Bless people now. Yes. You don't know if, how many people will not be with us next Thanksgiving or next week or whatever it is. Bless people now. So you might say, oh, Jim, I feel kind of guilty. I didn't do that very well. Maybe you got 364 more days. That, that gratitude is an attitude all the time. Thanksgiving to God, thanksgiving for others is something that should be practiced all the time. Write a note. Thank you for having me for Thanksgiving. I so enjoyed being with you. I cherish your life. You're unique. You're irreplaceable. There's nobody like you. Bless people now before it's too late to do that you know, physically with them. You're not promised it tomorrow. Your loved ones aren't promised it tomorrow, but they don't bless me. Doesn't blessing matter. Blessing other people mm -hmm. isn't about them blessing you. It's about blessing them. And I think that's a really wonderful wonderful quote to, to do it now. They're not going to smell the flowers that you got on their casket. Mm -hmm. Give them the flowers of love and appreciation now. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, blessed, well, Saint Mother Teresa always used to say, do it anyway. Don't worry about the response you're going to get or you're going to be nice to them just because they're being nice to you. Just be nice anyway. Mm -hmm. And so it really is. Maybe you still have family members with you. Maybe your college kids have come home mm -hmm. for the holiday weekend or your children have come from far off places. And maybe you've never told your family members, I love you. I appreciate you. Um, you know, I always tell our children, they're going through stuff with their kids. I say, stay in the love lane. Amen. Just stay in the love lane because I know love wins. And so you have to be respectful. You have to be honorable. And you have to love well. And the only way you're going to do that is with the help from very good God. Amen. And Jesus will help us to love when it's even it's, difficult it's to love. It's a great weekend filled with Thanksgiving. And everybody here at EWTN is thankful and grateful for you and that you're a family member with us. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and I hope and pray that you've all had a blessed Thanksgiving, and you're maybe still lingering in your Thanksgiving glow. Today, we bring to you John and Deborah Giles, and they have a great farm that they live on, and they're going to tell us about the good treasures of love Amen. and life that God has taught them, Agnus Day Farm. Yeah. You know, in our opening, <coughs> we were talking about um, having an attitude of gratitude, being grateful, how we practice that, not just I'm going to be thankful because it's Thanksgiving, 
but you two have really kind of uh, intentionally set up a lifestyle of celebrating, uh, being thankful. So why don't you tell our family, because you know, in life, in marriage, it's not like, oh, I'm just happy and I'm thankful <laughs> because you haven't <clears throat> suffered, you don't know sorrow, you don't know misery. Well, we know you and we know that you have had sorrow and misery and death and everything that could happen has happened and you're still thankful and grateful to God. Mm -hmm. So tell our family how you do that. Well, both of us uh, were raised in families <clears throat> where we have great memories. And they were always around the table with family, just like we were at Thanksgiving, and, and hopefully everyone had a nice <coughs> Thanksgiving. And of course, usually they were in rural settings, because there's something about a rural setting that just uh, is so peaceful, you know. Um, I know that sleeping at my daughter's house in the city and sleeping at the country are two different things. I, I, I learned this, <laughs> that when you go to the country, and you come back to the city, it takes a little bit of RAM memory to process all the noise. Mm -hmm. It kind of takes a few years off your life, I think, over time. That's, that's my little song, theory. Thank anyway. God I'm a country boy. So I'm a country boy. <laughs> well, there's sirens and <laughs> yeah. traffic, yeah. Uh -huh. and we don't have any of that. I was a city boy when I lived down there. There's a lot of jokes about that down there, about me being a city boy oh, or the still, city dog. We're but still I'm still city. the city guy. We're well, still the city. Your home that Green I acres. remember was in Montgomery, right across from the governor's mansion. Mm -hmm. And it was a really busy place on there. It was all it political was. and people holding office. And you was. were politically involved. Yeah, um, so now you've made an intention, intentional decision at this point to be out on the farm. Well, we would go to the farm, and we bought the farm. And we would go to the farm to get and spend the weekend. To get away from what you're talking <laughs> about. get away from what you're talking about. We would just absolutely love it. We'd slip in a camper. We stayed in a camper while we were building a cabin. And when we came back into Montgomery, no. No, no, you know, negative comments about where we used to live. But when you would cross that southern bypass, the rules of engagement changed when yeah. it came to driving. You know, mm -hmm. a defensive. I'd look at Deborah and I say, "What are we doing?" Mm -hmm. So anyway, we moved to the farm, and we liked sharing. You know, we talked yeah. a little bit before about the yeah. name of the farm being Agnus Day Farm, <clears throat> which in Latin is uh, Lamb of God, because we really do sense the peace mm -hmm. of God that passeth mm -hmm. all understanding when we're there. It's just very peaceful. At night, we may hear some coyotes and we may hear owls, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very quiet. And we like sharing that with others, and we like sharing it 365 days a year. We love having <coughs> the vacation Bible school down there. Yes. Uh, they have a big farm party down there. We have a petting zoo when they're there. We let them go through and pick up eggs out of the chicken house. Matter of fact, go the pet kids the sheep. say mm -hmm. all year long, the parents tell us they're always asking, when is the farm party? When are they going to get? Mm -hmm. Kids don't have an opportunity to see a place <coughs> like that. Right. And you do that out of your parish family, right? We do. And you have some... The Dominican the, sisters the come Dominican down. The Dominican sisters come down, and they lead vacation Bible school. They're wonderful. And then they go to your farm and have a grand celebration. They're all working all year to figure out <coughs> who's going to be the two that gets to come down there to the farm <laughs> party. <laughs> and so here we are on a hayride. You know, we have a hayride with them as well. And those sisters get up on that uh, flatbed on that hay and just have the best time. Mm -hmm. Hot, sometimes it's real hot. Yeah. But we uh, take them around and just have a good time. But we mm -hmm. try to do that, you know, have it available 365 days a year. It's a treat. We have a lot of people that have known us and we were in Montgomery and they just say, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. Mm -hmm. That's just a piece of heaven. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, just try so to give a little bit of that So you're doing all year piece. long. All year all long. long. We got something going on. Serving we're trying you. to get a date with y'all to come down. That's right. <laughs> We have to stop We're our city crazy people. Life. I don't know if I can take that. <laughs> it's too quiet. <laughs> no. Oh, me. Share with us, uh, you have a gift that we've experienced, and it's gift giving. So we receive your gifts as well, you give them. I, I you do like, that all year long. I want to make things. I don't want to just go to Walmart and buy you something. I want it to be me. So mm -hmm. I just love making things and giving it to people. It's, I, it's giving them a piece of me, maybe. Right. Yeah. And it is so special. And you, she doesn't just give you a gift. I mean, she makes it so special. It's always wrapped and it's so beautiful. It's not just the gift, it's the presentation of it. And then you know that it came from Deborah's heart, which is just and so then, perfect. And then he starts making wine. And right. so that's really, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, we got a few bottles of your wine. Yeah. Pepper jelly and we make. Um, um, what else do we want? This make? is just plain them? water, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't turn it into wine. I can make some good wine, but anyway, not that water. Not that way. Yeah. But Jesus uh, changed water to wine, and then wine into His blood. Powerful. That's what happens here at EWTN. It is. Um, share with us 
uh, the, the, this ministry of, not, not really a ministry, what you were sharing earlier, kind of persevering hmm. through uh, difficulties well, in a lot being of people thankful. During I was think, holidays, thinking of that, that quote. Oh, right. right. A lot of people during the holidays are going through really <clears throat> hard times, family or losing someone or a family breakup. Um, my parents divorced when all of us were grown and it exploded <coughs> our family. So there was no longer that hub where you come home mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've found during hardships is the communion of the saints, which I discovered after becoming Catholic. And I have a, a bracelet that belonged to my grandmother who went through an unbelievable hard time of being abandoned and having to farm out her children. And just wearing her bracelet is like a, um, a relic to me mm -hmm. of her and I would go out to the cemetery to her grave and pray and ask her to pray with me when I was going through hard times and I anybody that's going through really hard times and feels like you're alone you are never alone at the cemetery mm -hmm. and we have a <laughs> Catholic yeah. cemetery mm -hmm. with priests and uh, sisters and all that and I'll go walk around with them you know pray mm -hmm. for me yeah. when you're hurting right I love the cemetery yeah but, but you know, uh, during the holidays, folks have got a strange relationship with family. They do. And this is a perfect time to get it right. <clears throat> you know, we've shared with you all very intimately, <clears throat> the last thing that Micah said to us before he left the house that night. This is a boy he This is the boy got killed. Accident. He got yeah. killed in a car wreck that night. He said, love y'all. We used to have a gray parrot, African gray parrot, and it would always copy him, say, love y'all. <laughs> and he'd say, love y'all. So Micah, the last thing he said when he left the house was love y'all. And so one of the lessons that we got out of that is have no unfinished business. Mm -hmm. This is a great time during the holidays and year round really, but during the holidays especially to have no unfinished business. The quote that you gave earlier, yeah. don't wait. Don't wait till you're on the front row at the mm -hmm. cemetery, putting them in the ground right. to have those regrets and mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. It's uh, especially important for parents to speak over their children because how many children are longing for their father <clears throat> to say, you are so good, I am so proud of you, mm -hmm. and their parents never told them. Right. And I, I my um, nephew, he, he just recently mm. had his daughter get married, and mm. I was just standing at the reception looking at mm. him. I'm in awe of him. He's from a broken home. Mm. He is the most wonderful father. I was just over filled with mm. love for him, and I just went over and hugged him and told him how much he meant to me because a lot of times we don't, Speak it. We don't speak mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. I, my thing is, if you're thinking it, go say speak it. it. Right. They need to hear it. I need to say it. And I just, I wanted to pour out my love to him. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, our jobs as fathers is protecting and providing, but also to confirm mm -hmm. our children. Probably the biggest what thing. Do you mean, what do you mean by that, confirm? Seal them. Mm -hmm. So when they leave the house, when they, tell you know, they're proud error, of them. You t tell them you're proud of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, recognize their gifts. Recognize mm -hmm. their gifts. Mm -hmm. Always acknowledge little things. Write them little notes and just tell them how wonderful they are and, mm -hmm. and special they I are think and we, their gifts. We're probably on the cornball <laughs> side of that. We probably yeah, do it too right. much. But, but I don't think you could right. ever do it too much because you know why? In the world, all the world is doing is tearing them down. Right. I mean, and our homes should be a sanctuary yes. where they come in and they get patched up. The domestic right, from church. everything that happens to them in the course of the day, whether they're out there and they're getting shot at, um, you know, being torn down by their boss, their co-workers, maybe they're in a bad <clears throat> marriage, um, people don't appreciate them, and so they need to come back into our house where they can be restored, where they can be loved, where they can say, it's okay, you're going to be okay, you got this. And if we don't confirm them, mm -hmm. the world will in, their mm -hmm. own, in its own way. Right. And then you got a destroyed life. Right. Yeah. So we, I think of that, the Heavenly Father did that with Jesus in a sense at the baptism, right? This is my beloved son. You're, you're my son. I'm really pleased with you. I'm pleased with him. You know, and I remember the first time I kind of read that, and I thought to myself, well, this is pretty early on. He didn't even do anything yet, Jesus. Mm. And you get in all this, because I really thought you have to get confirmed when you do something. Mm. And, mm. and the good news of the gospel is that even before we knew him, he knew us, and he affirms the essence of our being. And that the best time to affirm someone is when they've done nothing 
or when they've done wrong, I have found now in my life. Mm. Because you're affirming the essence of their being. You want them to do right. You want it to be right. You, we need to do good things. But it's not because of that. I love you now in the midst of your failure. I've had to say that a few times to some of my children, when it, and they really did fail. They really, you know, and I said, I love you now. I love you because you're my son, not because, you know, you do whatever. Although you should do it now. We've got some problems here that we're going to have to work out. But I love you because you're my son, because you're my daughter. I'm really pleased with the essence of you being with you. Yeah. And that's what you're talking about, confirming. Yeah. And, and, and fathers do that in a special way and mothers do that in a special way that nobody else but can do But being an aunt and an uncle and, right. and, and mm -hmm. you know, neighbors' children, children you know that are in broken situations, we can be, and, and I believe hugs have power. Mm -hmm. I yeah. believe, you know, when they, Jesus said, who touched me? Right. I believe something is imparted when you touch right. people. They're, well, they're, blood pressure decreases, right? Mm. And their heart beats better. And I need it, that. It just <laughs> <works>. <laughs> My blood pressure's been high for some time. <laughs> you know, right? And so it just helps. I mean, we know that, you know, that's oh, what science man. teaches us, that that's what happens to us. And it's but so I, important. I, I, I love just seeing someone out in a store, mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, somebody total stranger, total stranger mm -hmm. and I want to bless them. And um, several years ago, I heard this story that if somebody compliments you on something, you should give it to them. I'm like, eh. mm -hmm. and I had this one scarf that every time I wore it, I got compliments and I thought the next time somebody does that, I'm going to give it to mm -hmm. them. And so I was in this store and I, this lady said, oh, I love your scarf. And I said, well, I want you to have it. She, she started screaming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You would have thought she, that yeah. what's the guy with the uh, publisher's clearing house? Yeah, and yeah, come to yeah. She was telling everybody in the store that I had given her that scarf, and I thought, gosh, I wish I had done this a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's a little thing. And, right. and, and I don't know her. I'll never see her again. Mm -hmm. But I love thinking about. I made her day that day. We just have mm -hmm. like a minute left, John. Why don't you just share from your heart, uh, just with our audience, you know, today, our, our family today, why Thanksgiving is so important, perhaps how the Lord feels about them, or whatever you want to say, because I know you just put it out there for them. Well, we're so unworthy, and He's been so good to us. And I think the older we get, the more we realize that. And I think there's less years, now we're 65, there's less years left on this mm -hmm. earth. And so it becomes very valuable to reach others and 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 show our gratefulness to God by you know, reaching out to others and touching others and writing that note. And, Amen. And being uh, uh, being cognizant of those around us that are suffering. Mm -hmm. John and Deborah, thanks so much for spending Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving with us and with the EW10 family. You're beautiful examples of grateful and thankful hearts mm -hmm. to God, for your family, and for the mission of the Lord of evangelization. God bless you both and your household. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Father Joseph joins us again on our show, but first we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, you have some thoughts on Thanksgiving. Well, hi, Jim, and hi, Joy. Happy Thanksgiving to you and, of course, to all of our viewers. Now, Thanksgiving for all of us, us Pats, is just as special as it is for all the millions of you at home. There are, of course, a few differences when you live overseas, and one is that Thursday is a working day for everybody but personnel at the U.S. embassies. And um, also there's a very little football here to watch on Thanksgiving Day. However, for Catholics, the wonderful start of the day is the 1030 Mass at St. Patrick's Parish. Now, St. Patrick's is the church for American Catholics and English-speaking Catholics in Rome. And yesterday at the 1030 Mass, U.S. Ambassador to the Holy See, Callista Gingrich, read the presidential proclamation. Now, it's strange, but a lot of you don't know that every Thanksgiving, the president issues a proclamation for that day. 
George Washington actually issued the first one, but to go back a bit, I think it was really 1863 with Abraham Lincoln that we see the first in a series of uninterrupted messages that uh, were being transmitted on this day, so the traditional Thanksgiving day. And, and here's what Lincoln wrote in that message. He said, I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. And of course, how wonderful to have those, those spiritual words, no? But um, now, of course, hotels, by the way, in Rome, for thanks, uh, offer Thanksgiving dinners, the traditional meal, and Americans will cook their turkeys for family and, and, and visiting friends. My main meal of the day is always at the Pontifical North American College, and yesterday we had Mass at 4.30 in the afternoon, and that is celebrated afterwards by a very sumptuous dinner, including a few Italian um, antipastos. Now what's wonderful is that it is the fifth year men, those are the men who were ordained a priest after their fourth year, came back to Rome for a fifth year of studies. They serve the meal, and by the way, they make all the pies that they bring. Now the highlights of the day, of course, are the uh, reading again of the presidential proclamation, the singing of the national anthem, and a toast to our country. And by the way, folks, P.S., Black Friday is also a big day in Italy, so we can do some shopping. Well, listen, time's up here. Back to you. Blessings on you all. Joan, thanks so much for those reflections. We're so grateful and thankful for your life and all that you do uh, through mm -hmm. EW10 to minister to so many people. Father, your thoughts on our sharing today? You know, so a little while ago that I was at Our Lady of the Sorrows Catholic School, it's a wonderful Catholic mm -hmm. school here, that asked me to talk about Mother Angelica and tell her story. But another of the speakers that was there is the author of the Napkin Notes. Do you know that story? No. So this dad, he would always just write a, jot a little note of encouragement yeah. to his children, put it in their lunch box before they took it to school, and mm -hmm. they'd open up their lunch, here's a little, little note of encouragement. And I couldn't help to think, and it just had this phenomenal impact that actually now it's grown. He's actually making them for Children's Hospital here in, uh, in wow. Birmingham. But it's been, been a very popular movement. I couldn't help but think of that when John and Deborah were talking about confirming. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. confirming your children. Just tell them you're proud of them. You're, you're grateful for them. And expressing your love, that beautiful quote that you had at the yeah. beginning too is just so important for us yes. to appreciate <clears throat> those that are in our lives mm -hmm. you know right and now. not to withhold the blessing yeah. like say it like say the kind thing and sometimes it's difficult for us to um, say something nice about somebody well then mm -hmm. that's when you really want to check your heart and with the Lord and say Lord why is this difficult for me like right. release this. Yeah. I want this to flow through me. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to. I want to be a blessing. I don't yeah. want to be someone with who withholds things. Father, yeah. would you close in a prayer and with a blessing that we might be able to do the things we are today? Amen. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that you confirm us, that you brought us into existence, that you have saved us through your Son Jesus, that you provide the wonderful sacraments to give us divine help in this life and that you've prepared a place for us with you and your son and <clears> the <throat> Holy Spirit. We thank you, we praise you, and for all eternity, we hope that we may be reunited in praise and thanksgiving. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Boy, speaking about confirming our children and the Giles shared as part of their story their own son who would die in a car accident and his last words to them before he left that night was I love you have you said that to your loved ones maybe you spent Thanksgiving and maybe you didn't say it. maybe you call them on the phone and say Johnny did I tell you I love you mommy loves you daddy loves you we love you keep it on EWTN God bless you bye now <laughs>